cool. What's up guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some puzzles. But we're not going to make your average two-dimensional puzzle. Today we're going to make some 3D puzzles. And if that's not exciting enough, I'm going to show you how to make a puzzle using any location on the planet, whether it's Mount Everest or your own backyard. So stay tuned and I'll teach you all the tricks you need to know. Let's get right into it. As I mentioned, we're going to make our map using terrain data from around the world. And there's this really great website called terrain to stl that helps you do that. So my puzzle is going to be inspired by my recent trip to Death Valley. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on Death Valley National Park, and I'm going to find an area that has some interesting topography. Now I can go ahead and center the map to my view, and then adjust these settings so that I have a nice big box, which is pretty much determining what's going to be turned into a 3D model. So I want to get a decent size here, and I'm going to turn the vertical scaling here up to four, which basically means it's going to exaggerate the height of everything four times so that there's more drastic changes and it's better for a 3D puzzle. We're also going to give it a base height of 10 millimeters so that there's a decent base to stick everything together. And we'll just go ahead and adjust this until it looks good and then just hit create and download. And just like that, we have an STL file. So here I have it opened up in Microsoft 3D Builder. And you can see it's pretty tessellated, but you still have a good idea of the terrain and it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and import that. And right away, we'll just go ahead and repair the model using this built-in repair tool. Now let's go ahead and scale this model to come up with the size we want it to be. So right now it's 94 millimeters and I'm just gonna make that 100 to make it nice and even. And this other dimension is just over 125 millimeters. So I'm gonna unlock it and set that to 125, which technically squashes it the tiniest bit, but I like the fact that it's just nice clean numbers to work with. And let's actually just make this whole thing a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna scale this up to 300 millimeters wide, and that will make the length 375. So that's a nice big puzzle that should be pretty impressive and fun to work with. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the split tool here to cut off some mass on the bottom, just to save some printing time. So what I'm gonna do is bring this plane up until it just starts to peek through. And then I'll bring it down another eight millimeters or so. That way the thinnest part of my puzzle is eight millimeters thick, which should be a good thickness to hold everything together. We'll confirm that split and then we'll just go ahead and export this as an STL file. So now we've got our terrain model and we just need to split this up into a bunch of little puzzle pieces. But before doing that, I designed and printed this little test puzzle that's basically gonna help me figure out how much space I want between the pieces so they'll fit together nice and snugly, but it won't be too difficult to stick the pieces together. So on this puzzle piece, each of the pieces has a different clearance between the parts, which is indicated by those numbers. So that top connection has a 0.15 millimeter connection, and then that slowly increases until there's a 0.4 millimeter connection at the end. And while they all fit together, I decided that the 0.3 millimeter tolerance seems the best for my puzzle. With that information, we can open up Illustrator and start designing our puzzle pieces. I'll make a document here that matches the width and height of my puzzle, 300 by 375 millimeters. And first I'll draw a rectangle that matches the size of the document, which basically sets the boundary of my puzzle. And before we go any further, let's change the units for the stroke width here, because right now it's using points, but we want that to be millimeters. That way we can set the line width here using millimeters, which is a lot easier to understand and easier to set correct measurements for something that we're gonna 3D print. So here we've got our border, and now I'll create a second layer and put that underneath the border. So here we'll just name this layer border, and this bottom layer is gonna be our grid, which we'll reference to make our puzzle pieces. So Illustrator has this rectangular grid tool here, and if we click on that tool button, we can set the options. So we'll make the width and height match the size of our puzzle, and now let's set up the number of dividers, which basically determines how many lines are in our rectangular grid and how many pieces our puzzle is going to have. So I'm just guessing here. We're going to try 12 by 9, and we'll go ahead and draw out that rectangle. 
And as you can see, the pieces are kind of squashed, which could be the shape you want, but I want them to be more square. So I'm actually gonna go back into those options and flip those numbers around. So we'll divide it by nine horizontally and by 12 vertically. And there we go. I like the shape of those pieces a bit more. Now let's do another layer on top of all of this and we're gonna start drawing the actual outline of our puzzle pieces using this really cool curve tool that'll basically draw a smooth curve that goes through all the points that you create. And we're gonna go all the way down each of these lines, creating these unique little tooth shapes that puzzles use. The reason I draw all these pieces by hand is to get this variation that makes it so that only the correct pieces of the puzzles will really fit together correctly. And that lets you know that you have in fact put together the right puzzle pieces. So now we have all these lines and you can see that it's a pretty clear puzzle, but we have to turn all these individual strokes into a single shape that's easier to use in Fusion 360. So I'll select everything except for that grid, and then I'll go up here and expand appearance, and then select it all again, and then go here and just expand. And that basically turns all these fills and strokes into just fills so that I can go into this Pathfinder tool and combine it all into a single connected shape. Finally, we just want to clean up the edges here that have all these little extra puzzle lines sticking out. So I'm going to draw a rectangle over everything I want to keep. Then I'll select that as well as the puzzle pieces. And then I'll use this other Pathfinder tool to cut away everything that's outside of that rectangle. Now we've got this nice clean outline of all our puzzle pieces, which we can export as a DXF file. And we'll make sure to set the units here so that one inch equals one unit, because that's the default in Fusion 360. And with that, we've got all the parts we need to make this puzzle. By the way, I know Adobe Illustrator is not a free software, unlike the other softwares I'm using in this video. There are free alternative softwares like Inkscape, which I haven't learned how to use, but you could probably make the same puzzle pieces in that. But I'll also make this DXF file available for download on my website. So if you don't want to go through this whole step of making the actual puzzle pieces, you can just go ahead and download that file and apply it to any model you want. So let's look at how that's done in Fusion 360. First, I'm going to go ahead and turn off Capture History, which allows me to import a mesh and turn it into a solid body. I'll select that Death Valley model I made, and I won't change any settings here, but I will go to this drop down menu and switch to the mesh environment. And then I'll double click to select everything, go to modify, reduce. And with this tool, I'm gonna reduce the number of triangles in this model as much as I can while still maintaining the form because while well, there's a lot of triangles and it tends to slow down Fusion 360 or just crash. So by reducing it, it should be a little bit easier to work with. Then I'll switch back into the model environment and right click on that and convert mesh to B-Rep into a new body. So it'll advise me not to do it, but I'm still going to do it. So sometimes Fusion will just not let you convert this into a solid model because it has too many triangles. And even though it did work in this case, it is going to slow down my computer quite a bit. But anyways, that's the price to pay for making this really cool puzzle. So now I'll go ahead and switch the capture history back on again. That way we can edit things. And now I'll just clean things up a little bit. So I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom here and draw a giant rectangle just to cut away these excess triangles. I'll just do this extrude in both directions and go up 0.3 millimeters just to cut away that bottom. And now you can see it's completely smooth on the bottom so it'll be easier to print. And now we're gonna select the bottom again and go to insert DXF. And we can go ahead and select that puzzle file that I made in Illustrator. As you can see, it's imported at the correct scale, although it's not positioned correctly. But for now, we're just going to hit OK. Now let's use the Extrude tool again, and I'm going to select the inside of these lines to basically extrude all the parts that I'm going to want to cut out of my model, all those little parts in between the puzzle pieces. So I'll create a new body and extrude that upwards so that it's taller than the whole model itself. All right, there it is, but I accidentally didn't select the entire outline. So I'm going to go back into that function right click edit feature and then I can make sure that I've selected all of those parts. Cool, so you can basically think of this body as our cookie cutter that we're going to use to cut into our 3D model. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and use the move copy function and align this thing so that it lines up with my model. So first I'll rotate it and then I'm going to go ahead and use move copy again and use this point to point option. With that, I can select the corner of the puzzle here and also the corner point of the model and then everything lines up perfectly. I'll hit S again and search for the combine tool and we want to set the operation to cut because like I said, we're basically using it as a cookie cutter. The target body is that model of Death Valley and then the tool, our cookie cutter, is this puzzle piece. But alas, Fusion gave me an error. It's not letting me do this cut, and the reason is that the edges of my cookie cutter are perfectly aligned with the edges of my puzzle, and that creates problems in the software. So as a pretty quick fix, I'm just gonna go ahead and scale the puzzle piece down to 0.99% to make it ever so slightly smaller, just so that the edges don't align perfectly and Fusion can handle it a little better. So I'll scale it down that tiny bit, and then if I do that same combine operation again and cut things away, well, this time it actually works. So I'll hit OK, and there we go. Now our model is split up into all these hundred or so puzzle pieces. Now if we open up this body menu, we can see all these individual bodies that represent all the separate puzzle pieces. So now we just have to go through the menu, right click on each body, and save it as an STL. So let's go ahead and set the refinement here to medium. Hit OK, and there we go. One puzzle piece down. We'll turn it off to remember that we saved it, and then we'll go to the next one and save it as well. So as far as I can tell, that's really the only way to save all these individual puzzle pieces. There's no mass operation. But you know what? If you're patient enough to do a puzzle, I guess you're patient enough to save all these individual pieces. <laughs> After we've got all those puzzle pieces saved, we're gonna open up our slicer so that we can 3D print this thing. So I'm using Simplify 3D, but you can also use a free slicer like Cura, just fine. I'm gonna set the bottom solid layers to zero, that way it's open, because we don't really need the bottom to be closed and it saves some printing time. And then let's just go ahead and select the first 30 or so pieces and arrange those on the build plate. Here we're gonna be using my CR10S, and yeah, 30 seems like a good number to print at once. So let's go ahead, preview that, make sure it looks good. And actually it looks like the infill here is a little more dense than it needs to be, so I'm gonna exit that, go back in, and change the infill from rectangular to triangular. And I can also save a tiny bit of material by changing the skirt outlines to one instead of two, which is basically the outline that the printer will make around all the pieces which is useful for purging the nozzle and also making sure that your print will actually fit on your printer. Anyways, there we have it. The preview looks good, so I'm gonna save that to my SD card and plug that into my CR10 and start printing with this really cool blonde yellow Pro PLA from Matter Hackers. I think it's the appropriate color for a desert puzzle like Death Valley. On this first batch of puzzle pieces, I guess my build plate wasn't perfectly leveled, so this one piece in the corner was screwing up, and I was really worried that it would mess up the whole print. So instead of just canceling it and wasting all this plastic, I just took some masking tape and taped down that one puzzle piece so that it hopefully would be able to continue printing and not mess up the rest of the print, and sure enough, it actually worked. That's a big relief because this is a 30-hour print, and printing all the puzzle pieces is actually gonna take something like 150 hours. So it's definitely a big project. But anyways, check out how the pieces turned out. They're looking really good, so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep printing the rest. Once I've got them all printed out, I'm gonna dump them on my table and start solving this puzzle. All right, here's my time-lapse assembling this puzzle. And you know, I'm actually not typically crazy about puzzles, but this was a really fun experience because it's totally different. You have no colors to work with. You're just figuring out the shapes that fit together, right? And that was pretty fun. You'll also notice that I have my X-Acto knife out, and that's because I accidentally printed some of the parts with different printer settings. So I did have to clean up some parts with that X-Acto knife to make everything really fit together smoothly. That said, I was able to complete the puzzle, and I think it turned out really awesome.
I thought that was really fun and cool, so I decided to make a second puzzle. And this one actually depicts the Gale Crater on Mars, based on terrain data made available from NASA. I'll link to that in the description because they've got all kinds of really cool models of the surface of the moon, of Mars, meteors, all kinds of stuff. So those are really great for making some different puzzles as well. As you can see, I made the pieces of this puzzle a lot smaller, and I also made them the same shape, which makes for a much more challenging puzzle. It was a lot more difficult, but hey, if you're a puzzle whiz, then maybe you'll enjoy this one. I also made this little frame to make sure that the puzzle is held together, and also to just create a cool way to display it. Here it is all completed. It looks really cool. And what's amazing is that this is an accurate representation of the Gale Crater on Mars at something like a 10 million to 1 scale. So that's pretty fascinating. Alright guys, there you have it. Your very own 3D printed puzzles. I hope you liked this lesson, I hope you learned a lot, and I hope I inspired some of you to make 3D puzzles of your own. Whether it's a location, or maybe it's something completely different. You can pretty much turn anything into a 3D puzzle, which I think is super cool. By the way, I'll have both of these puzzles, as well as my tolerance test, available on My Mini Factory for free if you want to print them out. Or if you want to slice up a model of your own, visit makeanything.design, where you can download that DXF file of the puzzle pieces. If you do make a puzzle of your own, I'd love for you to share it at makeanything.design slash community, which will lead you to the Make Anything subreddit, and you can share images of your puzzle, and if I get a good handful, I'll put together a little post for the website and officially share all the results, which I think would be pretty fun. So yeah, that's it for today. Until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.